Okay, so I am here looking at the page is looking really strange here. There we go. Um, I'm going to back it up a little bit. But we're looking at the Saints Herald called the True Latter day Saints Herald. And you see it says Plano, Illinois, August 1866. Um, obviously, that they're denouncing polygamy. Um, here's a pleasant chat. So each issue that I clicked, I haven't clicked on all of them, but from 1866, it seemed to always start out with just something from Joseph Smith III. And he, um, talks about a pleasant chat and then it's just the most negative thing I've read in a really long time. I'm sorry. Talking about zealots and people with apathy, although like I can feel this, you know, cause I've felt real apathy from people lately sometimes this past year um so you know he's having a hard time I've had a hard time like I feel this and he just he's just going on and on about apathy and then it just says Joseph Smith and so each of them always is but this is Joseph Smith III obviously Joseph Smith Jr. is dead since 1844 this is his son this is an RLDS newspaper he's running he's the editor-in-chief and then here we've got, I guess it's page 50. Um, they're talking about trans transmigration or resur they're talking about, a, I guess they called it a sexual resurrection. I haven't heard that term. Um, but I, I did hear transmigration of the spirit, as I've talked to about before, the first time I denounced Chandler and Dabel beliefs. I didn't know what they all were, right? I think I'd had a friend start to tell me about some book about all of these your death experiences and I was like uh-huh uh -huh. and then I just didn't care and go read it I think because again as I've mentioned I there were a lot of books that were near-death experience books in the 90s and um when a woman got excommunicated she decided she was psychic like it seemed to be happening a lot a long time ago um and I'd read one book that was really great but I even talking to my friend's little brother he was so wise he's had so many health problems but he was like, this doesn't sound like Mormon doctrine. I'm like, but it was in Deseret Book. He's like, wouldn't they just give this to the prophet? Why would they give all new? It sounds new. It doesn't sound quite right. And I didn't care that much about the book I read in the 90s. It was another, it was a man that wrote a near-death experience. But there's so many, they just kept getting published by Deseret Book. And my mom would be like, oh, this is great. But we weren't like, I can go follow these people. But anyway, I just knew that. I'm just like, oh, okay, I've, I've read some books about it, and I like watching them on TV occasionally. Sometimes I'm like, that doesn't sound right, and sometimes I'm like, that sounds exactly what Joseph Smith said, and it's some woman on some, you know, born-again Christian show, and she's trying to, she's freaking out and trying to change it and saying, but I, I know this can't be going against, but I know you think we should believe. It was sort of hilarious. I might talk about that someday. I think I'm going to find that again and maybe react to it because you're like, uh, you know, Joseph Smith was right. Anyway, Joseph Smith's journal, 11th of November, 1835. He, he meets with this Jewish minister that almost beat his daughter to death. And Joseph figures this out, but he's, he always had borders. So even though he was a prophet, ironic thing, being like a prophet and leading this whole church, but he'd let strangers in his house sometimes. I think that did sort of stop but not really because the Navi mansion, they were letting borders in, but I think they might've been a little bit more careful, but whatever. Um, <laughs> talking about his appearance, he had a long beard. I guess that wasn't in style. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> quite a bit older and just, just wearing these strange clothes and everything. And, um, and I guess he he was inquiring about the Book of Mormon. This is where we get one of the first vision accounts that some people criticize because he doesn't go into the same amount of details and doesn't say the exact same thing that we heard as we looked at church history in our, you know, quad book where it has Joseph Smith's history in there, right, um, that it sounded slightly different. But he had an idea that, well, one, he thought he was talking to a Jewish guy, thought it was a minister for a second there. Um, but then he knew and was talking as this guy was staying. So it's um, 9th through the 11th. He was there a few days. 
And so Joseph Smith goes into, when I was about 17 years old, you know, and meeting Moroni and just going to his whole story, <clears throat> which is <laughs> not what I'm going to read, but you, you can read it if you want. I guess some people lost their testimony because they found in some anti-Mormon book that this sounded slightly different, you know, it, but anyway, these days, while I was relating this brief history, um, Joshua seemed to be highly entertained after I got through that. I observed that the hour of worship and time to dine now arrived and invited him to tarry. And so he kept saying his name was Joshua. <laughs> he observed that he was aware that I could bear stronger meat than many men and could open his mind more freely. Um, and then he's just sort of, they're sort of just writing down what this guy's saying. I'm with the government in the United States. Da, 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 da. Okay. Then I withdrew to do some business among other gentlemen. And Joshua did not understand him concerning the resurrection. Let's back it up again. <clears throat> God, it's sufficient to lead us out of Babylon when we would get out of greater light. I told him that I did not understand him concerning resurrection. I wished to be him to be more explanatory on the subject. And he replied that he did not feel well impressed by the spirit to unfold it at the present time, but at some other time. And that's sort of what someone said to me. They were about to tell me about all this, you know, Chandler Adibal stuff, I think in 2017, at some huge conference, but he couldn't tell me around these people. Sometimes I'll tell you sometime, like, I don't want to know. It's like, but I want to tell you, I'm like, I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you make fun of these people? I've just had a really piece of year because of people that believe this stuff. <clears throat> it was, um, he, now we know it's Robert Matthias informed my scribe that he was born in Washington County, New York. He says that all the railroads, canals, and other improvements were performed by spirits of the resurrection. <laughs> and so he's talking to um, the scribe, which I'm like, who was it at the time? Warren Parish, because yeah, this is before they got to Illinois. So they're in <laughs> um, they're in Ohio, it's 1835, sorry. Anyway, um, but it was curious to see that he's calling himself a Jew. Um, and Joshua was noted in Matthew's New York, spoken of much in public print, so they're finding out who he really is. The trial, so they know court of justice for murder, manslaughter, contempt of court, whipping his daughter. For the last few crimes, he was imprisoned and came out. So basically, he just was super dramatic and all this stuff and got out of stuff. I um, witnessed that does happen. It happens. Um, he confessed that he was truly Matthias after supper, I supposed. You could read all this right there if you want, but let's just expand this. Will it extend larger? There you go. I propose that you deliver a lecture to us. So Joseph Smith's like, Matthew's go, go ahead and just lecture us. He did so sitting in his chair and commenced, talked about light and just sort of rambled and rambled and rambled. Darkness, da, da, da. Conversed freely upon the, he transpired in New York. His name is Matthias, Robert Matthews. He says that Joshua is his priestly name. And he keeps saying he's Jewish. All this time, I did not contradict his sentiments. So Joseph's just letting him talk. Wishing to draw all that I could concerning his face. The next morning, Tuesday, the 10th, so he had been there a day, came on the 9th, I resumed the conversation, desired him enlighten my mind more on his views respecting the resurrection. But they, he's already, they've already, <laughs> excuse me, written down that they know he like almost beat his daughter to death and possibly killed someone. Sounds like, just like Chad Laurie. He says that he possesses the spirit of his fathers and that he's a literal descendant of Matthias. The apostle that was chosen in place of Judas that fell and that his spirit is resurrected in him. And again, I just want to <clears throat> okay, maybe I say it later. But he thinks he's Matthias the apostle that was chosen in place of Judas. 
that his spirit is resurrected in him. So he's like, like reincarnated. That this is the way our scheme of eternal life, this transmigration of the soul. There it is. So he uses that same word or spirit from father to son, but he thinks it's father to son. I told him that his doctrine was of the devil. He's saying this doctrine is of the devil and that he was in reality possessed. It's like, yeah, you're possessed of a different spirit, of the wicked and depraved spirit. And yes, I did say that on the phone about Chad Laurie Daybell a year ago. Unregrettably, it's like most of people in America. <laughs> and I think most of us would say, we don't really care. <laughs> like, we think they're guilty. If they're guilty, I don't really care if they get the electric chair and die. Um, I don't think they do electric chair anymore, but they started bringing up the firing squad <laughs> it's in Idaho. I don't think I'd care too much if they brought that back. <laughs> <laughs> saying it was cheaper than easy. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. I think I'm just feeling so much better. <laughs> Debbie's back and she likes to laugh sometimes. Um, it's not funny, but it's so awful. What happened, it, it is funny that they're bringing back the firing squad. Anyway, <laughs> that was in the news. It really, really was. Anyway, Moving on, um, but Joseph's like, yeah, you're possessed of an evil, depraved spirit, although he professed to be the spirit of truth itself until he possesses the soul of Christ. Um, he tarried until Wednesday, so he thought he was going to possess the soul of Christ. Chad Dable thought he like was the Holy Ghost, and but I think he even said that he thought he was Christ. It just, was, it just got worse and worse. After breakfast, I told him that my God told me that his God is the devil, and I could not keep him any longer, and he must depart. And so I, for once, cast out the devil in bodily shape, and I believe in murder. Somehow, Kwaku L reiterated all this, and I just turned the show off or radio and just still tried. He's, he believes in this, and that's sad. And I don't like that that show he was on keeps promoting by promulgating things. It just... <laughs> But here we go, transmigration of the spirit. So what did Joseph Smith III say in their newspaper? Um, you know, so I guess to Quaker out, it just didn't sound specific. I mean, so it says that even though Joseph says this doctrine of transmigration isn't right. Okay. So this transmigration, I've told him that this, this his doctrine was of the devil. Transmigration of soul from fun, that this reincarnation thing came okay. joseph smith's direct sons are now running this newspaper we just heard from joseph smith the third um i don't know who actually wrote this next part it might have still been him because the rest of these it would sometimes put it in the title before they wrote what they wrote his we have the name at the end of what he wrote i don't know it's an interesting well maybe i'll see it as i go through this i'll just read what he wrote um whereas some people have been Latter-day Saints are become believers in transmigration or sexual resurrection. I will pause here. Um, at some point, David Hiram Smith got into spiritualism and sort of <laughs> trying to talk to the dead and thinking they're mediums. And I bet, I'm sure this was part of it. You know, it's... And, and I've known that people believe in reincarnation. I've, I have never once in my life being a member of the church thought that any of the apostles were telling me that I was going to be reincarnated. Okay, so did Kwaku L. Joseph Smith in his own journal was being a little bit vague there, but they do use the word transmigration. And so here we are talking about transmigration in um, the true Latter-day Saint Herald. They changed the name of the paper a few times, but it was run. The whole time, the life of Joseph Smith III from January 1866 until he died in 1914. And then his children continued it on. Um, not a horrible guy, not a bad guy. Um, think, I think things got twisted in his head. He knew what spiritual life was. He knew what polygamy was. He knew, but he didn't quite understand what all the words meant, though. I mean, but I, I want to be careful to not call him... If I've ever implied that I thought he just was ignorant or to understand things, I apologize for that. But I, I'm just going to read what they say. Okay. It, <clears throat> there are people who have been Latter-day Saints who have become believers in transmigration or sexual resurrection, whereas 
many of the believers in this doctrine professedly believers in the Book of Mormon, Book of Doctrine and Covenants and Bible, therefore by a part of the extensive evidence. Um, and I just feel like I should pause here. What What is dangerous about all this is like, obviously, Matthew's the prophet. Um, Joseph believes that he is a murderer. Okay. <laughs> the risk of believing that you are just going to keep getting resurrected and keep get another chance another chance another chance like if you watch groundhog day one day he just did whatever he wanted did all the bad stuff yelled at people and then the next day he just started over again and like all the bad things he did were just gone right it's just sort of this accountability in their mind just goes and that's obviously what happened to sean Larry daybell and that woman that lied to her son like we're not supposed to lie to your kids you know especially like that and make him go camping in Alaska when it's freezing and they had record snowfall. Obviously that was the Holy Spirit telling her to do that. She almost killed her son. Okay, and they had no experience according to the husband and you know that the, the father of that son. And he's like, they, they these are not we're not outdoorsy people, you know, they don't know how to survive. It's just really messed up. Okay. That's what I believe about that. Oh, it's so dangerous. Just lying and obviously lying and then co committing immorality. Um, obviously, and they, all they care about is money. So me not trusting someone that believes in this, knowing where I live or this and this and that, and a paper coming out saying I have something that's, that forensic scientists believe is valuable and these people, I, it didn't seem very consistent. People that believe in this stuff are obviously after money. Um, Chandler Dable were basically killing for money. Um, not above lying, like it just it leads to all the greatest breaking all the great all the Ten Commandments, all the greatest commandments. I have said that many times. <laughs> and then <laughs> he's like, "I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you." And then he starts to go to Alma nineteen. And then I felt like I should look that up. So I was listening to the spirit. And so I re-recorded this and looked. And I'm like, that's not what I have with Alma 19. It is Alma 40. I don't know why it's different. And he says, two, I go to verse two. It all looks correct. And, and this is 1866. And obviously it's not broken up into the paragraphs or the numbers or anything that I have. <laughs> but it sounds the same. I'm not going to read the whole thing side by side as I look at on my phone Alma 40. Verse two, it says, behold, I say unto you, there is no resurrection. Or I would say, in other words, this mort mortal does not put on immortality. This corruption does not put on incorruption until after the coming of Christ. That looked the same. And then this would be a new paragraph. But here it's all like, so when you talk about like a thousand changes, as I'm just looking at this, I'm like. <clears throat> so I did just read through all of this and it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is what I've read. This is Alma talking about how there is a certain time when we would be resurrected in a space and time between when we die. And now it would require what become of the souls from this time to the time of point of the resurrection. Now, whether it is more one time appointed and, and to men to rise, it mattereth not <clears throat> for men in general. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. Okay, I'm not going to read anymore. Um, no, I did not want to open music. Okay. Mm. And they're talking about, you know, it, it, in the Book of Mormon, it talks about a place of paradise and spirit prison, and we do teach that. It's like sometimes some um, other churches think that we teach differently than what's in the Book of Mormon. Like, we read the Book of Mormon all the time. We don't see a contradiction. There just isn't. There's, before you're resurrected, it's like spirit prison or paradise. Okay, righteous go to paradise until the time of their resurrection. This is still the Book of Mormon. Yeah, admit it. I'll just expand this some more so you can all see it. So he just continues as resurrection does not suppose that this first resurrection, which is the resurrection of this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls and their consignation to happiness or misery. Yea, cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, nay. But it meaneth that the reuniting of the souls with the body of those 
from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ, now whether the souls and the bodies of those whom they have been smoking shall all be reunited at once. The wicked as well as the righteous. Okay, so we're still, still going through the whole Book of Mormon. Not the whole Book of Mormon, but that it's really Alma 40. He's saying Alma 19, and I'll, I might research that later, but there's not the point. Um, For it is requisite that all things should be restored to their proper order. Behold, it is requisite and just according to the power and resurrection of Christ that the soul of man shall be resurrected to its body and every part of the body should be restored to itself. In the foregoing, and now we're going into, like, they're going to break it down. So what does this mean? We're talking about transmigration here in 1866, August 15th. Um, it just had Joseph Smith Jr., the third. He called himself Jr. because Joseph Smith Jr. started calling himself Joseph Smith Sr. after Joseph Smith Sr. died. And then it, 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 it actually up there just said just Joseph Smith. Um, cause, consequently, neither Alma... Let's just read it. In the foregoing quotation, I'm going to really read most of it, so just be patient with me because it's really good. Let's expand it. In the foregoing quotation, in quotation, it is shown that there has been no resurrection in or before Alma's day, and there would be none until after the coming of Christ. Consequently, neither Alma nor any other person had or would be transmigrated or born into the world of a woman the second the second time. Alma did not teach that the time would ever come when he would be born of a woman again, but, which is antagonistic to that idea, he says, this mortal does not put on immortality. This corruption does not put on incorruption until after the coming of Christ. Alma knew that he would not be born again of a woman or born again to a state of mortality, but that his mortal body, which he dwelt in, would put on immortality and this corruptible body would put on incorruption after the coming of Christ. That's 100% what I believe. And I believe prophets can be possibly, and they imply this, resurrected before the general, you know. <laughs> because obviously that happened um, with Joseph Smith. There were some, like it's not the second resurrection yet. Like the first was when Christ was resurrected himself. Some people were resurrected. Um, there would be another one. And when he comes again, the dead will rise. We believe that there'll be another resurrection when Christ comes again. I believe that. But there is evidence from the restoration and everything. Joseph Smith said there were some people born after or alive after that. Well, anyway, I just won't say anymore. Alma did not represent that there would be a multitude of times when the dead would be raised or that it would be, con excuse me, continual <coughs> operation <coughs> or synonymous or identified with the birth into the world. I'm sorry, you guys, for coughing. If this is the order of resurrection, why would Alma have said, God knoweth the time which is appointed? And why would he say, there is a time appointed unto men that they shall rise from the dead? When children are born into the world, they know nothing concerning God. But Alma says, when the time cometh, when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Therefore, the birth of a child is not its resurrection. Pause. Long pause. Alma says that the resurrection meaneth the reuniting of the soul with the body, not with another body. There can be no reuniting of the soul with the body if the soul enters into the body another body in the resurrection it would thus scroll it upward be re, be united with a body but not be reunited with the body alma expressed i just love how it's worded i'm sorry i'm just gonna read the whole thing alma expressed no doubt that in the resurrection the souls and the bodies are reunited but in reference to the time of the resurrection of the righteous who would live on the earth before the coming of Christ, he said that he gave it as his opinion that their souls and their bodies would be reunited at the resurrection of Christ. In reference to both the resurrection of the righteous and wicked, Alma says, the soul shall be resurrected to the body. 
from the body to the soul. And every limb and every joint shall be restored to its body. Even a hair of the head shall not be lost, but all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. This resurrection of the soul to the body cannot take place if the soul is placed in another body. I agree. The doctrine of transmigration is proved to be false to every consistent believer in the Book of Mormon by the foregoing quotation and also by the following from the same prophet. That same spirit which possesses your body at the time that you go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in the eternal world. Alma 1625, and I can't guarantee that that is the correct reference because for some reason his references are off but it's still really good what he says it is strange indeed how any believer in the book of mormon can read such testimony and yet said that the resurrection of the dead is a transmigration into another body again i think they're trying to help out and save um david hiram from the weird things he was getting into alma does not say that the same spirit which doth possess the body of a man at the time he goeth out of this life, will have power to possess another body in that eternal world, and that it will have power to possess the same body. Some of the transmigrationists teach that little children cannot be saved except by being transmigrated into another, another bodies, by being born of women again. There is in the Book of Mormon an epistle of Mormon to a son Moroni, which shows that this doctrine is gross error. In that epistle, Mormon taught his son that little children had no need of baptism because they are whole and need no physician. He said that the Savior said little children are whole, for they are not capable of committing sin, wherefore the curse of Adam is taken from them in me, and that it hath no power over them. He's saying it's Moroni 8.2. I'm not verifying all this right in the moment. In connection where Mormon said, teach parents that they must be repent, be baptized, and humble themselves as little their little children and they yeah and, and it makes sense why maybe chapter numbers and everything I might, I'm going to find maybe in 1860s or 1830s copy the Book of Mormon and try to it's fun to do but anyway so I'll be saved for their little children and children and so he just actually continues on on that and so this i think this might still be joseph smith the third writing i don't know um anyway so here he says there's only a small difference between the doctrine of some transmigrationists and obviously they don't all believe the exact same thing i don't really care but, and that believer is in the <laughs> essentiality of infant baptism the former believes that those children who die in infancy must be born again of women and afterward be baptized in unto Christ and thus put Christ and be alive in Christ before they can be saved in the celestial kingdom. By both classes, baptism is deemed essential to the salvation of little children. One class says that they must be baptized in the first state, only probationary state. And the other class says that the dead infants must be baptized in a second probationary state. This is awesome. The, the teachings of Mormon are antagonistic to the teachings of both classes. For if little children are whole and need no physician, or if the curse of Adam is taken in them in Christ, and have no power in them, if parents can say, humble themselves as their little children, and they shall all be saved as the little, if the little children are alive in Christ, even from the foundation of the world, if they're all alive in him because of his mercy, there's no need that they should be born again as before. And, and I won't say anymore. I just think this is really great. But as you get to the end, it doesn't say that it's anyone other than Joseph Smith III. So yeah. And then they start talking about Shakerism. I don't know, but, um, mm -hmm. I don't think Joseph Smith III believed in transmigration of the spirit and the direct descendant. He heard his father talk about everything and his mother talk about these things. Um, and unfortunately hearing some of those that he loved, um, starting to think and, you know, thinking that this sounds 
really cool, you know, as a lot of people today, they want to think they're cooler than they are, or just think they're more special because they don't feel special enough just being themselves. And then most, yeah, they pretty much all have mental illness. This was, a, was the situation obviously here, here. Um, and people that I've talked to that are into all this, I haven't, I just have not, that I've really talked to, that they have some mental illness for sure. Um, and it's sad. You know, I was just talking about um, the, the guy that admittedly had psychosis and was delusional. Like he described himself as delusional, right? Um, and another person that had DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. And so you can see like, oh, like they would just find this comforting in a way or something, but it's just not true doctrine. And I'm sorry for those people that have, or have some mental illnesses and have gotten into this. I'm not trying to force anyone out of this, but I don't try to force me to not speak my mind by intimidation and threatening and trying to ruin my life. That's not okay. Um, Cause I still care about people and I don't like how this is leading to people breaking all the greatest commandments, which most importantly of the ones of not hurting people and letting them live. Chad Larry Daybell. So, um, and I've heard weird things on that show. I don't want to, I don't even want to reference enough that if you haven't seen it, that you listen to this poor kid, but he started saying similar things like Chad and Larry Daybell on this YouTube channel. And it's not right. I do think it's evil. Um, I'm not trying to take away anyone's American right, just believe what you want to believe and write what you want to write and say what you want to say. It shouldn't, isn't that all right? Isn't it? For me to be able to say I don't believe in this? Because that's all I did a year ago. Never in statements for my family. <laughs> oh, maybe somebody claimed they thought they ever heard me saying something different. I don't it doesn't matter, but it, it does. And um, I've been very consistent since the first time I ever said anything was in 2020. <laughs> and I, I had I had read this and just felt something and I felt like this was important to note. And then I started hearing in the news of what they believed. And then someone was emailing me for years believing in this and it's unfortunate and I don't, I don't believe in it and I think this was the best one of the best things I've heard because people haven't been speaking about it and trying to debunk it or I don't know why other than just really light things being implied in conference like it's, it's it has been debunked and said um yeah I, there's there's nothing that's implied to me that you're reincarnated again into mortality. I'm like, that just sounds awful. You know, all the health problems that I have, I, I really look forward to the resurrection when Christ comes again. Because that's what it said in the Book of Mormon. That's what we're taught. That's what I believe. I've never believed differently. Um, anyone who says otherwise is a liar. And there's been a liar. Or two. Um, or three. No, I don't know. Anyway... <laughs> I follow just like, <laughs> laughing and coughing and then sometimes the coughing sounds like laughing I just I have asthma and cold it makes it worse and it just makes me sick even if I don't breathe in things that make me sick so <sighs> again this was August 15th 1866 the true Latter-day Saint Herald um, just follow the spirit when you read with this but again I'm reading from the church's catalog they decided to put this in right as I was doing my really researching all this it was just amazing and I'm grateful for it um because it's helped me in my research which I'm not sharing everything I'm really praying hard on um yeah so I think the, if you pray and read your scriptures and 
you apologize if you get mad at someone or just try to be Christ-like. Um, you can avoid deception, but if you get so deep in your sins and your own self-importance, this will be seductive to you. The stuff that's really rampant, especially where I'm at right now. So it's not, not comforting, but I have had people privately say, you've really, really helped. I'm too afraid to tell you specifically what it is, but you've really helped someone, a bunch of people, but I don't want to tell you to really let you know that you've done a death. <laughs> I'm just going to be really vague. and weird. So that happened uh, a few months ago. I'm like, okay. You know, and I, I, I try to follow the spirit when I make videos and and it's okay if it's just one person or if just a couple of people care. Um, I'm obviously this isn't going to be entertainment or super interesting, and that's not necessarily my goal. But I'm I'm going to work harder because I really I've actually made some investments to um do better. I'm doing all these, although I'm just sitting at the computer again, just with my earbuds in this time, which I know is not the most and <laughs> not the favorite videos of people, but. Excuse me, now I'm yawning, but um, I thought this was great. I, I think this was Joseph Smith III. I couldn't find anyone else. It, it might have been Alex, and he just forgot to put his name on there. Um, I didn't see who else could have written this, but he was the editor-in-chief. So either way, Joseph Smith III was like, this sounds good. Let's put this in here. So. He talks about transmigration of the spirit. He's uh, denouncing it, clearly. Um, and Joseph Smith denounced it right here, saying that this doctrine of the transmigration of the spirit was of the devil. And and I agree. And I do know one person that believed it. Just sounded, I just it did not sound very hopeful. It's not, a, it doesn't, it did not bring hope in their life and the hope in your life that you just endure to the end in this life, this one experience in mortality that is painful and so, so hard is just once you get one chance and hopefully you continue to live. We all get to live long enough and pursue our prayers and drive safely, live long enough to do the things that God wants us to before, before we depart and go home. When God chooses to send us home, and I have no desire or hope that anyone goes sooner than they should go, I mean, ever. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of people that do believe in the weird stuff on a certain channel, it just, it's just not good. There's a lot of really bad things being said by some members of the church online. Um, and I try to do what I can to just follow the spirit and things that I do post. I'm not perfect and I can get really irritated with things. And that's a big reason. Another reason why I don't want comments because I don't want to be annoyed. Um, cause it gets annoying. And there were some people, a few people that were freaking me out that were starting. I knew they were, they can just put any name and just start saying stuff. And I'm like, okay, you're that person. There's, you're trying to screw with my life right now. I know you're commenting on my page and you're not using your name, but I'm, no, I'm not going to be duped into talking to you. So I just, when I blocked one person last summer before last, it, someone just kept changing their name and saying the exact same thing. And I'm like, wow. Your comment is annoying. I already debunked it. You know, it just, I know they want their comment there and I've, you know, experienced where I wanted to have something there and felt like I was targeted unfairly and, and it does happen. People are targeted unfairly, but if someone's being condescending, putting me down, which is what had happened a lot from that one person, it wasn't right and they're still just, so you just move on with your life. Don't watch my channel. Do stuff that makes you happy. And that's what I'm doing. It makes me happy to research this and spread light and truth. And I think, you know, the sons didn't know everything and 
were wrong about a lot of stuff, but I think this was, um, they were definitely right on this specific, specific little article here. Anyway, have a good day.